in the short term, we're looking for collaboration as our team has a tremendous opportunity to position itself right, given our salary cap space. And, you know, we've never drafted. In my 30 years of ownership, we've never been drafting as low as we're drafting. So we're counting on our internal people, um, whom we're still learning and uh, uh, evaluating. So that was the question from Mike Reese right out of the shoot. The, the question was, who's going to make the final call? I was watching the NBC Sports Boston coverage this afternoon, and then they went to Michael Holly, who was down there, and he gave me something that felt like news. And it's either or. It's not both. Either the front office person has say over the 53-man roster or the head coach does. The front office person has the say on who we're going to draft or the head coach does. It's very rarely collaborative. There's input, but somebody has to make that decision. So that wasn't clear enough. But what stood out to me, and I'm just going to take the leap here, it looks like if I'm one of these front office guys now, Matt Groh, Elliot Wolf, I'm looking for another job. Because it sounds like they're probably going to bring in a general manager, which, is not, which would not be unprecedented. Okay, so the general mm. ma manager part would be unprecedented. Robert's never had a general manager. But you go on to say what wouldn't be unprecedented is that they bring someone else in. He uses the board that's yep. been set by Wolf and Grow, and then he makes the picks off of that board like Belichick did to Greer. Bobby Greer, yeah, Bobby Greer. But, yep, yep, okay, right. yep. you think they're bringing someone in from the outside and he'll be here in time to make those decisions? Is it more than just a feeling, Mike? Well, Thank you. That you give me all I need to know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Listen, listen, Mike. Well, think about it. Okay. Uh, this is it's, a lot of it is common sense. Uh, first of all, let's just put, take Matt Grow off the board. Matt Grow is here because of the relationship between Bill Belichick and Al Grow. He's here. He doesn't have the experience that Elliot Wolf does. So he's off the board because when you're in these positions, they're like marriages, and marriages that are shorter than your average American marriage. They're going to last maybe three or four years if you're lucky. And so you've got to have somebody at, in that general manager spot. If you're a coach, the general manager has to be somebody you trust, somebody who has as much to lose as you do when you leave the room. You don't think that person is stabbing you in the back. And I'm sorry, Matt Groves not going to be that guy. I'm going to say right now, definitively, Matt Grove will not be that guy for Gerard Mayo. Elliot Wolf, eh, maybe. I think they go outside the organization to get that person, and I have a feeling they already know who it is. I was going to ask you, do you they think it's already, already, yes. it's already in their back pocket? I think they know who it is, and Mayo has to be comfortable with that person, Mike, because in the first 100 days of the Mayo administration, he's got four major decisions slash endorsements to make. O coordinator, D coordinator, general manager, and the number three pick in the draft. So you cannot go into this job. It's your first job, and you're going to have somebody, you're going to have Elliot Wolf doing that for you? Of course. This is I what, mean, I, you it, can't. It, this you can't. is what we've been saying for days, so I'm glad to hear you have gleaned this because uh, it's, it's absolutely what they need. They need a strong person there next to Gerard Mayo on top of Gerard Mayo. I mean, somebody, like, I mean, like, somebody he, he's, he's, he's got to be comfortable fine. with him, too. No problem. Gotta, yeah. There's got to be a close relationship. Yeah, I mean, you don't want him to hate him. So, like, you know, of, of, of the four things, the defensive coordinator, like I said to you yesterday, I, I, I don't care. You figure that out, okay? It's about passing game, quarterback, this massive decision that they have at number three. And what, what world are they going to bring him into? Who is the offensive coordinator? What is the scheme? That has to be married at the hip, and it's got to be right. And as we'll get to here coming up, most teams get it wrong. It's hard. It's not easy to navigate that. So they need someone to nail that decision. And I don't think Mayo's ready for it. I don't think anyone on the staff I trust to do it. They need someone. I'm glad to hear that you think they have someone in the back pocket. I look forward to hearing who it would be. Now, on the timing of it, Mike, you know, the draft is April 27th, but – Free agency starts mid-March. Franchise tags are due right after the Super Bowl, basically, is when right. that franchise tag period starts. I want to say around February 14th or something like that. Franchise tags are due. And there's even some close calls here on the roster. I mean, what's Kyle Duggar? A lot of people think he's a, a, a pillar on this team. you got to keep Kyle Duggar. A lot of people think overrated, doesn't play in the passing game. That's just one example. I mean, you've got some guys that you could consider franchising. 
and then there's the combine that month. So you, this guy's got to come here, Mike, in the next month at least, don't you there, think? There's a lot of there's a lot of decision making, but I'm not gonna. But I think this is where, where we disagree, uh, Michael, is that you think that person is making all of the decisions by by himself. I don't. I think the head coach, whether he's ready for it or not, you got to get ready. I <laughs> mean, like you're not really ready for the job until you do it. Even when you think uh, you you have all the answers, you, you get into that 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 job and things go fast and you got to figure it out. If you're Gerard Mayo, I look. Most guys are going to go down. M most guys will lose the job even if they win. When we were talking tonight about Mike McCarthy, oh, will he stay? His 17 games over 500 in Dallas. Nick Sirianni is life and death with his job. And, and Burt had a great stat earlier, over 50 games. He had a 50-game stretch, Sirianni did, where he was 38 and 12. And we're talking about his job. So you can lose the job if you're bad. You can lose the job if you're good. I'm sorry. I got to have a decision. Even if I'm a rookie, I got to have some input into who's going to be making decisions for me. This no, is I'm my career. I know. I'm fine with him having a relationship with the GM. Uh, and having some say, though. Uh, oh, having some say in it. Uh, okay. I don't, don't like I, that. I, I don't want him making the call on the quarterback or the offense. I don't. I'm sorry. He's but do you want him naming? How he, about naming the offensive coordinator? Do you want him no, to name that? No. You don't want him to name the OC? I mean, look. Have a say. Have, be part of that conversation. He's only been coaching a couple of years, and he's been on defense. There, there's, there's no background there that would say that he's has what it takes to find that guy. I don't trust it. And, and that's, not a, that's not a commentary on him. But who do you trust? To, but who do you trust? Someone to who's find? been around the league who has been on offense. But, but I'm saying, but who's going to make it? The general manager usually has the, has the say about, hey, I want this guy to be my college director. I want this guy to be my, uh, my area scout. I understand. But you, you're going to let that guy co pick the coaching staff? Look, well, he, he, may, he may get it wrong. He may get it wrong, but I would much rather get it wrong on my own than somebody get it wrong for me. And now you're behind and, okay, two, three years go by and you're trying to fix the staff, trying to untangle somebody else's mistakes. And that's just a losing formula. Bert, what do you think they do with the GM stuff? I, I think they're being forthright, and they're going to investigate what they want to do over the next two or three months and look at candidates, bring people in, talk to them, evaluate the people in house. Two or three months, Bert. And I, I think that this is – Two could or three run months? Up, I think this could run up through the draft. Like, I think it could happen earlier. It could run up through the draft. I think they're going to try to evaluate no it over shot. the top. And, and, look, here's the problem with you that, You don't Mike. have a new GM before Mike, free agency? Mike, you've got enormous decisions to make. I'm right. with you. I'm with you. I agree with you 100%. You've got to make a decision on the number three overall pick. That's a huge one. You have, like, 70 or $80 million in cap space. That's a big deal. How do you spend that? What do you do with Michael Wainu? What do you do with Kyle Duggar? I, like, these are big box decisions for the future of your franchise. And I think you have to have everybody in the building having investment in these decisions. And so the, the, the trouble you run into if you hire somebody in May, which some teams do, like the Bills did that at the beginning with Brandon Bean paired with Sean McDermott. If you go back and you look at what Buffalo did that offseason, though, they pushed a lot of the decisions off. They didn't draft a quarterback that year. They were judicious with their money. So then why are the Patriots waiting two or three and I And I think like this slow and steady approach here is sort of I think, mm. the way they conduct business. But they haven't been involved in this sort of arena for such a long time. And I think that's a big part of the problem. Okay, in a they way, knew they were firing Bill in, in October. Okay? Yeah. So, and that's why, I think, that's why I think that this should have been – they should have been back channeling to Dave Ziegler, to Bob Quinn, to John Robinson, to Scott Pioli, to Thomas Dimitrov, to all of these guys over the last two to three months because they knew it was going to happen. Perhaps I think the bye did. week was the time to do it, you know? And unfortunately, now it feels like, and what I've heard is that, you know, and, and look, like Robert Kraft sat down with Elliot Wolf and Matt Crow to talk about all of this on Friday. And so they discussed it, they've been through it. And it seems at least like they're not going to rush into anything. The problem is the decisions are going to rush up on them. Okay, real quick. Mike Giardi wrote yesterday in the Boston Sports Journal that one team source believes the Pats will promote Elliott Wolf to a more significant mm -hmm. position of power. However, I did hear from two prominent league sources who believe Wolf and Grow will eventually land wherever Belichick does. Yeah. Okay, perhaps we'll get a better sense of it in the coming days and weeks. You have a thought on this, Mike, first before we go to Bird? Yeah, I, I think that it makes a lot of sense, especially for Grow. I mean, Groh's whole career has been made by Bill Belichick. Yeah. And, and I, I would say he is, if you, look at his, if you look at his background, it doesn't match where he is right now. It doesn't match his position. His background, uh, it, it does not, most people in the league with his position 
have a much more right. robust background. Yeah. He's out. I'm all for that. I don't want to hear this two to three months crap, Bert. I, I mean, think Groh's going with Belichick. Okay. Um, I, I think I, I, my feeling is that the way he's seen inside the building is sort of as an agent of Belichick. I think Elliot Wolf has seen way more as his own guy. And I know Elliot's built a relationship with the Crafts. Elliot has a relationship with Gerard Mayo, too. Elliot was the number two in Green Bay. He was the number two in Cleveland. He's arguably the most qualified guy for the job here. So he would make the most sense, at least, to be the top decision maker while they figure out what they want to do with the structure of the front office. All right, we've got much more coming up.